In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. There's so much going on in this gospel proclamation. It would maybe require an hour-long episode of Father Adam Speaks about the stuff. <laughs> I'm going to try to pare it down to ten minutes, maybe. <clears throat> if you were to take just at face value, like I always say, if you just take what's there and run with it, it's still okay. If you just take this story that Christ proclaimed salvation to somebody who wasn't of the Jews at Jacob's well and tells her she's going to have living water and obviously he's talking about salvation and that was that and we move on, it would be okay. It would be enough. We could do lots with that and maybe even mull that over in perpetuity and it would be enough. But there is so much more going on in this gospel. Her name, we remember her, this woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, as Fotini, or Fotina, or Sketlana. Those don't sound very similar. <laughs> it means enlightened one. Fos, Skit. These are Greek and Slavonic words, Russian words for light. This is not what her mother called her to the dinner table. As she didn't yell at me, Fotini, come down. She was a Samaritan woman. This is a Jewish name, a, a Greek name. But this is how the church remembers her. Because she was truly enlightened. Now, it's very important. There's so much going on here, like I said. Christ is in Sikar on purpose. Knowing that this is not the land of the Jews, the land of the Hebrews, given to them by God in the covenant. This is not part of the land of Canaan. <laughs> that was inherited, this, this was something else. This was part of the northern kingdom. See, Samaritans were sort of Jewish, or sort of Jews, sort of, sort of Hebrews. But they were the Hebrews who had stuck around, who did not get forcibly brought into Babylon a generation or two or three before that, or several generations, actually. These were the people, the remnant of, of, of the Hebrews that stuck around. And during those generation or two began to embody some of the practices basically to in two generations to have been absorbed into the people around them into the pagan people around them so so much so that when the the hebrews were allowed to return with Ezra and Nehemiah and to build the new temple so, uh, to build the second temple these Samaritans, who still waited on the Messiah and still practiced a form of, of uh, Hebrew worship, or, or a part of it, mixed in with a bunch of pagan things, but they still worshipped the one God. And they still waited on the Messiah. They were still cognizant that this was promised to them. And they worshipped in Samaria, on a mountain, in a temple created there for the worship of the one true God. Yet they were not still the pure, they hadn't kept the faith. And so they weren't just foreigners, but they were apostates, in a way. So they were not just, not of the, and unclean, not just of the people uh, of, of God, the chosen people, they were, they had been part of the people of God, and had, in the eyes of the Hebrews that returned from Babylon, they were unclean, especially because they were not just doing it wrong, they were apostates. And so they were unworthy of being mixed, mixed with. They, they didn't hold company with them. They were cast off, which is why uh, Christ, in a, another part of the uh, scriptures, talks about the, the Good Samaritan, the one who helped the, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the one who actually helped the, the Jewish man who was waylaid by... by uh, Brigands, uh, it was a Samaritan that, that practiced this mercy, this Christ-like mercy. He did that on purpose too. But he's on purpose at Sikar. He's on purpose at Jacob's well. It could have been any well, and this would have been a good story, and we could have gleaned a lot from it. But it is on purpose that he stops at Jacob's well. The well that Jacob gave to Joseph. Jacob's well. 
Because what's taking place here is a revelation, an exposition of Christ's purpose and his mission on earth. Yes, it even states in today's proclamation of the gospel that salvation is from the Jews. Salvation comes from the Hebrews because it comes out of, Christ comes out of the Hebrew people. The Lord chose these people. He gathered them to himself. He took them on a journey of revealing himself to them. He led them out of Egypt. The 12 tribes of Israel came from Jacob. Jacob's 12 sons. One remained pure. This was the kingdom of Judah. This is what was the group of people that were taken when God still dwelt in the temple, in Solomon's temple. And when they came back, they built another temple where God did not dwell, where the Spirit of God did not dwell. The theophonic glory cloud was not there. It was still appropriate to worship at the temple in Jerusalem. But the Lord's Spirit did not dwell in the second temple. And so he's at Jacob's well, talking to the Samaritan woman, doing all types of things that are socially unacceptable, talking to a woman, and not only a woman, a Samaritan woman. And they have this playful, almost back and forth conversation about water. Woman, give me a drink. Well, you don't have anything to draw water with. And they have the conversation about this water You'll thirst again if you drink this water. But the water that I have to offer you is living water from which you will never, never thirst again. She was still thirsty for the Messiah. She and her people were still thirsty for the Messiah. And he says, you will never thirst again. He was offering to them his holiness, this opportunity for sanctity, this opportunity to believe that the Messiah was here and to accept him. You see... It had been written in the Old Testament, the only testament that they had at the time, that when the Lord comes, comes again, He will draw the people of Israel to Himself. He will reunite the tribes. And this is exactly what He's talking about at this Jacob's well. Jacob, the father of the tribes of Israel. He's offering this living water to the tribes of Israel who had been absorbed into the nations during the time when they were away. So much so that they were not recognizable. Which means that every single people on this earth by that reasoning had absorbed the people of God into their midst. All of the tribes of Israel were still being called to Christ. Called to receive the Messiah. It wasn't just the Samaritans who you could at least genealogically trace very familiarly back to the Jews. But it was all the peoples and the races, the, the 70 nations, so to speak, on the earth that they absorbed the people of Israel. They'd been scattered, except for the, the tribe of Judah. Israel was the northern kingdom. And it had been scattered into the far ends of the earth. And he says, you will always be thirsty from this water, from this particular well, this H2O. You'll always need more. You're, you have a biological process. You'll always need more water. But the water that I have to offer to you from my side, this blood and water that will be poured out upon all the earth, you will never thirst again because this is the Messiah. And when you receive this from my side, you will be filled yourself with living water. And he says to her, a time is coming, and now is, where the Lord will be worshipped in spirit and truth, not on this mountain and not in Israel, not in the temple and not on this mountain, but in spirit and truth, because the Holy Spirit will come to dwell in the hearts of men. This will be the seat of wisdom, is the human heart that has submitted itself to God's will. All the peoples of the earth are called to him, because all of them are his people, because his people have been dissolved into all the peoples of the earth, and he calls them back. He calls you and I back 
to drink this living water. And of course she leaves her water pot because it's, it's not insignificant that she abandons her water pot that she lugged from her home to the well. She abandons this to go and proclaim the glad tidings to her people. I think this is the one. I think this is the Messiah. Come and see this guy. You have to hear him. And so they do. They hear Christ speaking. They believe he is the Messiah. They worship him. And they ask him to stay with them for a couple of days. These people were saved. These people were invited to partake of the living water. And they did just that. Salvation came to that house and to those people because the Lord had fulfilled his promise to them. It is not insignificant, by the way, that we hear this proclamation of St. Fotini, St. Svetlana, the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, during this time between Pascha and Ascension. And then, of course, Pentecost following shortly after that. We hear lots of things. You know, we hear, we hear the, the story of the paralytic. We hear uh, the murmuring women. We hear St. Thomas. We hear all these stories after Pascha. But it's important that we're hearing what's going on now because it illustrates something. This is, this is Paschal tide. And at Ascension, when we read about the Lord leaving, the Lord being taken up, the last thing, almost one of the last things it says, is he made them to understand the scriptures, which previously they had not understood, at least not completely. And that's very significant. This is part of it. It is the scriptures that he, they finally understand at, at Ascension. And we, we hear the story of, of, of the woman at the well because we hear the proclamation that this is for all mankind. This is for all of his chosen people because he chooses all of them. Because they are his people. We are his people. When we hear about St. Fotini, St. Svetlana, we must remember why she's called that. She is enlightened. She has seen the light of Christ. She was thirsty for the Messiah. And she accepted this living water, abandoned her earthly things. She abandoned her job and went to tell the good news to all people. If this isn't an invitation to us to abandon our earthly cares, not our earthly responsibilities, it is good to be responsible for what we're responsible for, but abandon all our earthly concerns and cares for the sake of Christ. Putting Him first, drinking of that living water, that we who have been waiting on salvation may receive that salvation, that we may be regarded among the chosen as well. We must drink that living water as well. We must sit at his feet, hearing his words, and saying, Lord, give me this water. I will drink. And then we must drink it. Every day, it is poured out for you and for me. It is our way to heaven. It is that living water. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God.